Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today, um, we are here in beautiful Plattsburgh, New York on the shores of Lake Champlain. We just finished up um, the Champlain tournament, the last pro circuit event of the 2022 season, or at least the, the regular season event. And, uh, and yeah, so I just wanted to run through the baits that I used to get a top 50 finish here. I finished 45th overall, had a blast, uh, had over 16 pounds every single day, which, you know, is really nothing special out here right now. This lake is just fishing really phenomenal and and uh, lots of people were catching, you know, those 18 to 20 pound bags. So uh, really, really cool fishery. Uh, it's, it's, I've been here four times now and I'm just, I love it here. I mean, it's, it's like a vacation every single time. And this time I decided to really focus heavily on smallmouth as opposed to going for largemouth, which I normally do. You know, I've always kind of discounted myself as a, a um, smallmouth fisherman. You know, I always consider myself just a shallow water power fisherman. Um, but as of late, you know, I, I realized the last time we were here at Champlain, man, I need to give my, myself a little bit more credit. Um, I know how to target smallmouth uh, especially on these these natural lakes up here and so I need to, to go ahead and and uh, focus on that because the smallmouth out here more and more are uh, becoming the key to winning on Champlain so that's that was my whole strategy I had one largemouth area that really helped me out um, the second day especially um, the first day it was completely off I found out that the the sunny weather really uh, you know shut down the largemouth bite it's kind of weird because northern uh, largemouth generally won't um, uh, be affected that much by weather conditions in my experience, but but for some reason, and I've seen this before on Champlain, sunny weather shuts them down for some reason. But the smallmouth uh, love the sunny weather, so that's a good thing. But anyway, so I'm gonna run through the, the baits and the tackle that I use to catch my fish this week. I'm gonna go through each day. Um, so day number one, one again we had sunnier conditions I was a really early boat draw um, the first thing I did uh, actually forgot to grab it here it is right here I knew it was on the floor somewhere um, I, I ran to my my largemouth area that was kind of the, the game plan was to get you know a good limit of largemouth right off the bat that was the plan at least and so I got there and threw a chatterbait I was throwing a, a z-man jackhammer chatterbait 3 8 ounce a white and chartreuse which is kind of a weird color choice for largemouth on a natural lake like this especially where I was fishing which was really dark you know water it was still clear but it was dark water you'd think that you'd throw like a bluegill color but I experienced this um, a few years ago that that white and chartreuse uh, catches both the largemouth and the smallmouth really really well I was throwing a bluegill uh, uh, you know imitation before and uh, and it caught largemouth great but then I switched to white and chartreuse caught largemouth great and smallmouth so through this um, the first day I only ended up catching one largemouth in my largemouth area but then I ended up going out and focusing on smallmouth and the key player especially for day number one was a drop shot so my drop shot set up the, the the key to this whole deal was was the the bait um, the fish that I was I was focusing on which you know uh, there was a lot of other guys that, that finish in the top 10 in that general area and in the top 50 and those fish were really keying in on alewife schools there was a lot of schools of alewife um, swimming around so instead of using like what I normally throw which is like a green pumpkin or brink green pumpkin goby color i use the z-man trick shot in the deal color the deal is like a really really good natural um you know alewife imitation it's got a little bit of a green pumpkin back to it and then more of a pearl um uh, belly on it so it really does look uh very similar to those bait fish but it's also subtle enough to imitate a lot of other things uh down there as well so that seemed to be like the key color because i i tried tried a lot of different drop shot baits and a lot of different uh, colors and the the trick shots and the deal seem to be the deal 
So that's what I threw the majority of the time. That's what I caught the most of my fish up on the northern end of the lake. And I was using a, um, a, a 5 16th ounce a tungsten weight most of the time. Um, you know, I, 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 I'm just kind of an impatient drop shotter, man. I really, really like to have a weight that is a little bit heavier so I can get down to those fish a little bit quicker, um, especially in the winds and the waves and everything like that. And I was only fishing 12, 12 feet of water. Um, so normally people would be throwing like eighth ounce or maybe a quarter ounce at max, but I like the five sixteenths. And then when I went deeper in the afternoon, I would use like a half ounce. Um, but so, uh, we've got that, that weight just, you know, varying the sizes, but the five sixteenth was, was kind of the key for my fishing up North. And then we've got a size two, um, Hayabusa, DSR 132 hook. I love that that drop shot hook. It is just so good. And, and you know, I've learned over the last couple seasons, you know, you don't have to be scared about throwing a really, really small hook on a drop shot. It hooks them pretty darn good. In fact, the, the smaller the hook, I think the more bites you get. And this is actually a pretty big drop shot hook. I've, I've gone down to, to much smaller sizes than this and been successful. But um, because those fish weren't really eyeballing the, uh, uh, the, the bait that much, they were really essentially just, you know, the, the first day at least, they were really just darting up from the bottom and hitting it on the fall. Uh, I just used the, the number two size. And then then uh, the rod that I was using, really super important because smallmouth are very vicious. They're, they, you know, they, they're very acrobatic jumpers, uh, energetic. Uh, you need a rod that has a lot of flex, okay? That, that doesn't, that kind of has a little bit slower action to it. This right here is a 7.3 medium spinning rod, the all-purpose series from Fitzgerald. Um, it's got a lot of whippiness to it. It's not my favorite for largemouth in general, but man, for smallmouth, it's got the perfect bend to it um, to really let me uh, carefully fight these fish. And you just have to really fight these smallmouth out. And then I, I spooled up either with the S3000 like I've got on this setup right here, uh, the spinning reel, or the Stunner S4000. Um, so I, I, I had both on the deck, but um, usually I use the S4000. That one's my favorite all around bass fishing reel. Uh, and then the line that I use, really important. Um, of course, I got the, uh, the uh, Seaguar Smackdown Braid, 20 pound um, uh, flash green braid on there is my main line. And then I would do about, um, I'd say like 25 feet of, of Seaguar gold label. And I, I really leaned on the six pound test in most of this tournament. Now I did, the first day I was able to really, you know, catch them on eight pound test, but then they started getting really, really spooky, really tough to, to, to get them to bite. So I started going down to the six pound test. And the, the cool thing about Seaguar Gold Label is the fact that, that um, you know, the six pound test that I was using is pretty much the same diameter as like the four pound test of other brands. Um, um, it's just a much thinner line. So you can maintain uh, the, a, a certain level of strength with the gold label while downsizing the diameter. So, um, and it, it, as a general rule, it's usually, you know, the, the diameter size is usually uh, one size down uh, per line strength. So, um, yeah, so the gold label was a huge, huge key for my finesse fishing uh, all week. So um, another note on the drop shot, so I've kind of alluded to it a little bit already, but all week I've had uh, a spot up north uh, on the north end of the lake near Missiskoi, um, and that area, you know, was my primary area to, to catch numbers of fish and to, you know, get up to that 16 pound mark. Uh, the first day I was able to get to up to 17 and a half and then go to another spot that I had in the inland sea. When I was in the inland sea, of course, I'm fishing deeper water. I was fishing out to like 35 feet of water. And in that situation, again, I was using like the half ounce tungsten uh, drop shot weight and a uh, I switched to a green pumpkin or green pumpkin goby uh, drop shot bait and, and the trick shots um, because 
I don't know. They just, for some reason, were focusing more on those darker colors down there than they were where I was fishing up near Mrs. Koi. So uh, that was kind of, you know, a, a weird little key detail that I kind of figured out. During, and I actually talked to another friend that saw the same exact thing. I think that maybe they were just feeding less on, on alewife um, and focusing more on, you know, maybe first year uh, uh, perch or something like that. So that was the drop shot rig, really super important. I think out of all the days, except for the final day, the drop shot was, was kind of the key player for, for most of the, the limits that I got. All right. So first day, um, drop shot caught most of my small mouth i caught that one uh fish that one large mouth on the chatterbait uh and then i also caught a, a couple fish on a jerk bait so i used a jerk bait um, that first day and also the last day the jerk bait was actually the primary player on the last day as well i caught uh 90 percent of the fish on a, a jerk bait got on that bite um, but i was using um the uh 112 plus one the the Berkeley stunner uh, and of course replacing the hooks with uh, Hayabusa trebles uh, super important uh, for these smallmouth specifically because these smallmouth like they're not choking this bait so they're not really getting in their mouth they're kind of getting it on the sides of their gill plate the sides of their mouth uh, and so you need like really really sticky hooks and these hooks are just really super sticky and I was constantly changing them out um, just because I wanted them to be just at their maximum sharpness and stickiness um, but that was the the the, the exact bait i actually did use the just the regular 112 too but both the same color i don't know what this color is called but it's it's kind of like a, a transparent uh uh, you know, pearl, and then you got the orange belly. Smallmouth seemed to really like it. So that was kind of a, a key player for like one or two fish that I weighed the first day and like th three or four out of the five on the final day. <laughs> the problem on the final day was I ended up losing like five fish um, that were in the like four four and a half pound range it was uh, we were we were on a pretty big bag but we couldn't keep them hooked up that's why i was changing out those trebles and had nothing to do with the trebles man if i wouldn't have got any of those fish in the boat uh if it wasn't for you know putting these hayabusa uh, hooks on there premium hooks uh, that are really sticky again are really super important but sometimes man with a jerk bait uh, they just don't hit it right they're not they're not getting it all that well all right, so, and the jerk bait seemed to work in a lot of different weather conditions. Uh, it seemed like the key kind of was, was wind, uh, but it could be cloudy and windy, it could be sunny and windy. Uh, both of those ended up, uh, you know, producing on the jerk bait. I forgot, almost forgot about the, the setup for that. Um, so I was fishing this with 10 pound test, um, uh, a Seaguar Tatsu, that was my, my um, you know, my main line for that, or my only line rather. Uh, and I, I would have actually gone down to, to eight, you know, possibly, but you know, I actually got a, a, a tip from Scott Dobson. He mentioned that he fishes uh, on a little bit heavier line. So, um, considering how good he is with a jerk bait, I might, uh, consider doing that even for fishing up North like this, even though I'm trying to get maximum depth, uh, I think that those smallmouth are going to come up anyways, regardless of if it's, you know, a, a foot or two shallower in the water water column. So I don't know, but I was using 10 in this tournament, never had an issue with that. Uh, I was using a 7.3 medium versus series rod. Um, honestly, if I was to do it over again, I would have used a seven foot medium heavy. And the reason for that was that, that I, I didn't feel like I was really getting, uh, you know, I, I feel like the cadence of the, the, um, in, in my, the cadence of, of working this bait was a little bit of affected by the, the more, uh, softer action on this rod. Uh, and I also feel like I wasn't able to uh, lean in on those fish quick enough because as soon as you felt the bite, you needed to like already be leaning into those fish to get a good solid hook set. So I would probably switch over to a seven 
uh, foot or a seven foot medium heavy Versa. The seven three medium heavy Versa is way too stiff, but the seven is is actually perfect for a jerk bait. So even though I did use the seven three medium, that's one thing I probably would have changed. Uh, and then also I used an 8.1 to one gear ratio uh, VLD 10 from Fitzgerald. That's my favorite bait casting reel. And uh, I like that high speed gear ratio just to pick up the slack with the jerk bait and also, you know, pick up the slack to, to be able to get those fish hooked good. So that was the jerk bait. The next one, which I was really looking forward to, I really have not capitalized on, on the topwater bite with, with smallmouth. And I heard so much about a walking bait uh, on Champlain that I had to kind of fold it into my arsenal for this tournament. And it ended up producing, uh, you know, pretty, pretty big for me on the second day. It helped me call up uh, a really, really big call uh, on uh, kind of the end of the day. I had one school of fish, it was like, there was like 20 fish that were in the four pound class and bigger, and I couldn't get them to bite anything. I tried everything. I tried the drop shot. You know, the first day they reacted to it, and I actually hooked one or two and ended up losing them. They just weren't eating it good. Um, but I threw like a drop shot, I threw the jerk bait, I threw a chatter bait, I threw, um, and I did actually catch two on the chatter bait on the second day or the first day. Uh, sorry, all these days are, are mixing together. But um, so I did catch two on the on the first day. So the first day they were definitely way, way uh, less pressured and they were ready to eat. So that school was, you know, I got two fish uh, out of that school the first day, two of my bigger fish. And, uh, and the second day was the day that I was just throwing the whole boat at them. Uh, I, I, you know, the spy bait, drop shot, Ned rig, jig, jerk bait, chatter bait, everything. And then the one thing that they ended up coming after, I, I, I fooled one four and a quarter pounder with this bait right here. Again, same as the jerk bait, I switched out the trebles to a Hayabusa treble hooks. This one I had the NRB coating treble hooks on there. Um, the NRB coating is essentially like it acts like a, a Teflon, a coating that creates uh, a very slick surface. So it gets a really good hook set, really easy penetration uh, right off the bat. And uh, so, you know, I put those on there and ended up having a four and a quarter pounder just absolutely clobber this thing. I've been watching them on Pan Optus Live Scope for the longest time uh, and uh, and so uh, I couldn't get him to bite anything and then they finally ended up eating this and he just destroyed it and I watched the whole school come up for this bait but one just ended up getting it so and that fight was uh, pretty epic and I was actually surprised I got it in the boat because man those smallmouth just freak out they go crazy and and uh and you just kind of got to expect to lose a few but um the rig that i was using with this um uh, i've done videos before on walking baits i actually did one last month uh, and I use the same setup that I talked about there. I've got this monofilament leader, only about you know a foot and a half. In fact, you could do, you know, eight inches, and it'd be just right. And then uh, that is 15 pound test. It's like one of the only times I use uh, monofilament nowadays. And then I have that connected to a main line of 40 pound Tactics braid uh, from Seaguar. Tactics is is a four strand um, uh, braid, four carrier braid. Which which means that it's it's a really tight weave, and so it's it's a round tight weave that that just I think casts really good. So for my long casts, I like that that tactic sprayed. And the reel that I was using, I was using the FX8 uh, in the 7.2 to one, which is actually the only gear ratio they make in it. Um, and uh, yeah, it worked really really good. I'll tell you one thing, uh, I tried using straight monofilament this this trip with my walking baits and I just didn't like how it, it wore me out man uh, fishing these these big um, these big topwater plugs uh, 
braid just allows you to get the the right action very very effortlessly um, and uh, so it was that's hard to say effortlessly um, but yeah it, it works so much easier um, but the only disadvantage you have when it comes to braid is the fact that it has no stretch so you have to be very very ready to like hit that thumb bar and let those small mouth you know uh, make a run because otherwise you might pull it out of their mouth so you just got to be very very careful very very uh, aware of your your thumb bar uh, technique all right so the for the very last lure that I used and caught fish on um, we already talked about the white and chartreuse chatterbait jackhammer uh, but we also used a green pumpkin or, or bluegill imitation. This is the Brett's bluegill color from Z-Man. Uh, I used the half ounce and I ended up putting, a, this is a very, very rare occasion that I actually put a trailer hook on a, a, a chatterbait. So I was using the Hayabusa trailer hooks. Those are really good trailer hooks. It's a really cool system. You get these little rubber beads on here um, that keep that hook on and it keeps it like better than any other system I've found like the, the the aquarium tubing, all that stuff, not nearly as good as this right here, but um, those hooks are just really good. So I put a trailer hook on there. So I'm pretty much uh, going against everything that I've ever said about a, a, um, a chatterbait, but uh, in this situation, I mean, smallmouth just end up crushing these baits and sometimes they don't get them. So I put a trailer hook on there and ended up catching a lot of my, my fish uh, with that trailer hook. But when I was just targeting largemouth, you know, around, uh, you know, the heavy grass, I, I definitely did not have the trailer hook. It was just when I was out in, in water where you could catch both species that uh, I used it. But yeah, the, the chatterbait, I just covered a lot of water with it uh, and was fishing those shallow shoals that had some, some you know, some of that uh, pond cabbage or milfoil or all that stuff and was just covering water. You know, if I wasn't able to get things going out deeper I'd hit the shoals make you know one drift over it and see if the fish are biting some days they were biting this like the final day I caught a, a three pounder um, doing this and ended up losing a four pounder before I put the trailer hook on unfortunately um, and uh, but uh, uh, you know I had several instances where I pick this up on a, on occasion, you know, I, I wouldn't be able to get him to bite out deep again. So I just go burn some water and, and kind of switch to into a different gear to kind of shake off any of the, the, uh, um, disappointment of not catching them out deep on finesse stuff. Occasionally you just got to switch gears and, uh, and, you know, go back to something that just keeps you kind of engaged. And then, you know, that, that seemed to help me catch one or two fish every single day. So, um, the rod and the line and the reel that I was using with the chatterbait, same one I was using for the white and chartreuse. Uh, I was using a seven, three medium heavy, uh, versus Siri rod. That is the number one chatterbait rod that I use. As you guys know, uh, I was using 20 pound uh, red label fluorocarbon from, from Seaguar. I love red label. It's inexpensive, but it is really, really strong and just really dependable fluorocarbon. Uh, I was using a 7.2 to one gear ratio uh, VLD 10. Again, that is my favorite um, reel overall for, for fishing of chatterbait, but that was it. Um, so it, I mean, overall, it was a really, really fun tournament to be able to go from, you know, ultra finesse fishing to, to fishing top water to like just flying around fishing a jerk bait or a chatter bait. It was, it was the perfect blend of, of power fishing and finesse. Um, but that, those are the baits that I use here at Champlain this week. Uh, I lost a lot of, of big fish. No, no fault of my own, no fault to, to the, the gear that I'm using. It's just the nature of the beast sometimes. Um, you've got to expect to, to lose some. So, uh, you know, I, I could have potentially had much, much bigger bags, but everybody can say that too. So uh, these baits right here, if you're coming to Lake Champlain, 
Champlain, uh, or really any northern fi fishery that has smallmouth or largemouth and or largemouth in it, um, these baits right here are going to work very, very well. So hopefully this helps you catch more fish when you come to Champlain or any of these lakes up here in the Adirondacks. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and make sure you like, share, subscribe. I'm gonna see you out on the water, the big water of Champlain.